Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for joining. I'm sorry, my lighting is really bad. <laughs> so good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining so nice and early. We begin in the next eight minutes. My name is Paula Herlock and I'm with Wellness Experience Jamaica. And I have with me some beautiful, brilliant panelists who are about to really share from their heart with you because we care so much about the persons in our population and their health. So just give us eight minutes more so that other people can join at the specified time and we will be back.
Warm good afternoon to everyone. Thank you so much for joining and welcome to our very first Zoom, uh, utilizing natural, traditional and alternative remedies towards fortified immune systems for Jamaicans. And I cannot tell you how grateful I am to everyone, especially our panelists who agreed to come on board for this sharing, a very critical, critical sharing. Um, I am just grateful that we have the brilliant minds that we have here in Jamaica. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Paula Herlock and I am the convener of Wellness Experience Jamaica. And for those who are unfamiliar with our platform, we are just a consortium of wellness practitioners committed to promoting natural healing modalities. So if you are not already following us, you can follow us on Instagram. That's really only where we are at the moment. And we are at Wellness Experience Jamaica. All right. Now, Wellness Experience Jamaica has as its simple mandate, shifting the narrative from illness to wellness by empowering Jamaicans and of course, internationally, because I recognize there are many persons here who are from other countries and we thank you for joining us. So it's really shifting the narrative from illness to wellness by empowering everyone to take responsibility for their health. We are seeking to do this by sharing information and by curating intimate wellness experiences and other educational events such as this one. We feel that this is needed now more than ever. We commit to utilizing social media to share traditional Jamaican remedies to, the, to Jamaica and the world with a view to improved general health. And this can be done by essentially unlocking the power to heal self through knowledge of the benefits of traditional herbs and food and understanding also how important immersion in nature is and also other natural healing modalities like meditation, exercise, yoga. It's Jamaica. It's pure Jamaica. So I Someone is speaking. We ask that you mute. We believe that there is a knowledge gap in this regard. And so it is our hope that this platform and the panel that has been selected will assist in sharing vital information for persons that are interested. Now, more than ever, Jamaica and the world need to be empowered around utilizing herbs and food to maintain their health, right? Now, what we have done or what we have brought together is a panel that we thought would be beneficial to a wide cross-section of persons. So we have, first of all, Tashania, and I'm going to just give you a little, you know, snapshot, a little background um, so that you can have an idea who our panelists are. Oh, someone is asking me to project a little louder. Okay, I will. Right, so just to give you a brief background to our presenters. First up, we have uh, Tashania, and Tashania is the co-owner and resident herbalist of Indy Organics, a herbal apothecary and health food store. They, she's a firm believer in the value ancient medicine has to offer, and she has studied extensively in integrative medicine, University of Minnesota, traditional Chinese medicine, University of Hong Kong, and Jamaican herbalism. Her passion is empowering her clients to reach their health goals through personalized nutritional plans, detoxes, lifestyle modifications, education, and supplementation. Our next presenter is Makeda, and she is Keisha Makeda McDonald, and she's with Kush Vegetarian Cuisine. 
She's an attorney at law, vegan chef, and wellness professional for the last 10 years. She's the co-founder of Kushite's Vegetable Cuisine, a company dedicated to providing delicious, wholesome, plant-based cuisine. And both her and her executive uh, and executive chef Kush Tafari were creators of the very first elegant dining vegan restaurant in Kingston a few years ago. They have been promoting the use of alkaline herbs and food to achieve optimal health and wellness. Our third presenter is Empress Tandy Wise, and she's an award-winning um, wellness practitioner uh, specializing in, in womb health. Womb health. Uh, she studied under uh, Queen Afua, and her specialty right now in within the context of this presentation is gut health as it relates to the immune system. So to kick things off, and I'm sorry if I was low, to kick things off, we are going to go ahead and start with Tashanya um, because let me just check. Empress Sandy was supposed to be starting, but I am not sure that she is in place yet. Let me just check to see. Empress Stanley, if you are here, please let us know. Okay, she's not yet here. So we are going to go ahead and have Tashanya from Indie Organics begin the presentation. And as we said before, she's going to be speaking on Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine for viral and respiratory illnesses. So... Handing over to Tashan. Thank you, Paula. Greetings, everybody. Um, I'm going to ask you to excuse my very rude dogs. <laughs> They're pretty excited today. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine. Um, Paula, are we able to get up the presentation? Yes, we are doing, we're, it's, it's up and we will be sharing it shortly. Awesome. Just let me know when you're ready. All right, so we're going to just do a little bit of background information just to introduce people to what is Ayurveda and what is traditional Chinese medicine. Now, you know, as long as there has been humans, you know, we have ways of discovering things that are happening in the body what is going on with us. And depending on where you are in the world, there are different approaches to that. Ayurveda is actually from India. Um, and this is considered by scholars to be one of the oldest healing sciences. In Sanskrit, it actually translates to science of life. And it, the practice is over 5,000 years old, right? Um, traditional Chinese medicine, on the other hand, is 20 centuries a year. 20 centuries old and it's practiced in China. Um, and it is best, both of them are best believed, you know, in balancing the mind and the body and focusing um, on individuals rather than symptoms, which seem to be the approach for Western medicine. Um, as you know, in Jamaica, it's out of many one people. So you have an Indian community as well as a Chinese community here in Jamaica. Some of these herbs that I'm going to be mentioning herbs that are incorporated in just the daily practices of persons of these communities to build their immunity and actually behave in general health, right? So I think we'll just go straight into it. Paula, let me know when you're ready. If not, can you give me a third? Can you make a okay, we're having, okay, good. Perfect. Awesome. So we can go to the other slide. So while that gets sorted out, um, you know, I like the idea of Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine because it has been around for centuries. And there is value to be found in that because, you know, what, one of the things that I notice is that oral tradition is slowly dying off. Um, so when we can go back 
there is value to be found in what our elders have to share um, in things that were discovered long ago. You know, in Jamaica, we have, we have a thing that, that says old things become new again, right? So we're gonna touch a little bit on these traditional Chinese medicine herbs, basically immune supporting herbs that strengthen your lungs, clear heat from the body, um, helps the body to detox and also supplement your chi, nourish your yin. We're not going to get into too much details about what that's about, but overall these herbs that are going to be mentioned are really good for any antiviral activity, um, any pathogens uh, in the body, heat that is in the body as a result of fever, coughs, and so on. So pay special attention to these. Um, I'm just gonna go through very quickly, um, touching on each of them. You can go on the next slide, Paula. <clears throat> is this the correct slide? Yes, it is. Okay. Honeysuckle flowers. All right. So this is Jing Yung Wa, right? And it is actually an anti inflammatory herb antibacterial as well, and it's traditionally used in Chinese medicine to treat fevers, inflammation, diarrhea, and skin infections. So normally how this is prepared, the leaves, um, the flowers are dried and you make a tea from the honeysuckle flowers. And this is actually something that is used quite often, especially uh, right now uh, in, in, in China, as it relates to certain respiratory illnesses, this, this is actually one that is included in a lot of herbal, herbal formulations, right? Um, so again, this clears heat from the body and reduces toxicity. It's, it is also used to clear inflammation, infection, con and any conditions as it relates to internal heat. It's antibacterial, antiviral. Um, the taste of it is very sweet. And in Chinese medicine, they have what is called five-phase theory. It believes that whatever the taste uh, of the particular herb, it connects to a particular organ. Um, and, and I'm sorry, it determines the action that happens in the body. Now, um, the honeysuckle flowers, these help to slow down any acute reactions in the body and helps to detoxify the body um, and also helps to nourish the blood. So this one is excellent. I would recommend though, um, for this one, you use the Japanese honeysuckle flowers and there is a difference. The Japanese honeysuckle flowers is the one that's normally used um, quite widely by TCM practitioners. Next slide, please, Paula. And again, this is just to familiarize you with certain herbs that we have simply around the place. Um, you can get any of these also at any health food store. Licorice root. This is one of my favorites, Gang Shao. Right, it moistens the young, the lungs. It helps to expel phlegm from the body, stops coughing, releases any spasms, and alleviate pain. Harmonizes and moderates the effects of other herbs. So normally, in formulations, in TCM formulations, you always find licorice somewhere in there because it helps to harmonize the other herbs. It helps to bring a good flavor to um, any of the formulations, right? And again. Um, it is, licorice is one of the oldest and most frequently used herbs in TCM, right? And it falls in the category of plants that are tonic herbs for chi deficiency. Um, it's sweet in flavor and it slows down acute reactions and detoxifies the body. It clears heat from the body, and moistens the lungs, as I said before, and it stops any coughing. So licorice root tea, you normally just, um, Take like two teaspoons, um, depending on how many persons you're preparing for, uh, probably like eight to 16 ounces of water. And um, you just put that to boil for like about five minutes or so or less, um, and then allow it to cool and then you drink it. Again, it is sweet, nice 
to go down. So most people always like it. In combination, um, we use it, as I mentioned before, in a lot of other herbal formulations. Next slide, Paula. So if you notice that the, the taste that's been mentioned, you notice sweet, um, pretty soon you're going to notice that there are bitter tastes as well. Um, this is mulberry leaf. And again, all of the herbs here that we're, are being mentioned are herbs that you can find easily or, or it's readily available. You know, you might know a neighbor that has a mulberry leaf tree or you have one, or you can go to the health food store. So mulberry leaves, um, are really, really good. It's used to clear heat in the lung. Anything that's associated with any dryness, um, it relieves exterior and clears heat. And again, that's, that's in relation to any fevers or anything like that. It's what is called a cool, acrid herb. So it has a cooling effect on the body. So if somebody's suffering from like a fever or anything like that, mulberry leaves are excellent um, for that. Uh, it's any sore throat, if you have fever, headaches, coughs, um, and you can use it in combination with chrysanthemum as well, the chrysanthemum florets. One thing to note is that it, it increases uh, sweating in the body. Now rice bitters, this is something a lot, I'm sorry, when you're ready again, Paula. Rice bitters, um, is also known as king of bitters, right? And it is native to Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka and, and India. Um, however, as you know, TCM and Ayurveda are both Eastern um, forms of medicine, right? So you're going to have some similarities in the herbs that are used. So even though rice bitters that we know, and I put that name because it's referred to as king of, king of bitters, um, most persons in Jamaica are familiar with it being called rice bitters, right? And of course, it is extremely bitter. So the roots and the leaves are used um, in any herbal preparation. Okay, I'm, I'm, okay that, I'm answering that question right now. So the, the roots, not yet, um, Paula. So the roots and the leaves are used. And it is used to eliminate any toxins in the body fever. It also helps to reduce any fatigue that's going on. Um, and historically, it's been used to treat any infections, diarrhea, swollen lymph nodes, and so on. Um, and as I mentioned before, it's extremely bitter. One interesting thing to note is that it was brought to Jamaica by Vietnamese refugees back in the 1960s. So rice bitters is actually something that you can find like hanging out in your backyard sometimes. Um, and the preparation for this, you know, you dry the herb and then you basically make a tea from it. Um, persons who are interested, like probably after we have finished the, the information, you can just hit us up at Indie Organics on Instagram um, and I'll send you any information as it re relates to like the preparation of it, right? Okay, so you're not hearing me well? You want me to project some more? Okay. Again, I just wanna talk a little bit more about rice bitters because it is such an interesting herb. Um, it's used a lot in treatment of like sinusitis, the con common cold, um, rheumatoid arthritis, of course. It has even been used like in treatment of malaria in some areas, right? Um, yes, it's preferred if it, if it is dry. Next slide, please. So again, these bitter tasting, sweet tasting, uh, they they do different they do different things in the body. Again, a lot of our diet, and I'm sure Makeda will touch on that tends to be imbalanced, you know, especially our Western diet, we eat a lot of sweet and, and salty things. However, there's one of the things that Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine stresses is that we need to be eating all the flavors. So the bitter, 
the sweet, the salty, all of those, there is value to be found. We don't like to incorporate a lot of bitters, but as you, you would notice is that these things, um, these herbs that are being mentioned are really, really good for you in, in helping the body, helping you to ex expel toxins, um, helping you to just, you know, maintain your immune system and um, just be well. Now, Ayurveda, um, these Ayurvedic herbs, most times when people talk about Ayurveda, uh, you know, we remember golden milk, which is basically turmeric and, and ginger um, with a little bit of black pepper and so on. And that's really, really good in terms of reducing any inflammation in the body. But I'm going to uh, mention some herbs here that are not so frequently mentioned, but you can also get from your health food store. Now, Tulsi or holy basil, this is one of my favorites. Um, and it's because it has so many uses. Um, and it's actually something that I always recommend. It's antibacterial, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and it is used for common colds, headaches, stomach disorders, inflammation, heart diseases, various forms of poisoning. It's like a one purpose fit all kind of herb. Um, one of the things that I really love about it um, is that it, it gets into the deep tissues, um, it dries out any tissue secretions that's going on and it normalizes your constitution. What does that mean? Um, basically, it's an adaptogenic herb. So for example, um, if you are stressed, this is a herb that is really good for that. Um, if you are experiencing pain in the body, this is the herb that is good for that. And again, um, it can be used as a tea, you can use a dry powder, um, or you can mix it with some ghee, right? Um, anxiety as well, it addresses that. Any cough, asthma, diarrhea, fever, this herb, this Ayurvedic herb is really, really good. Matter of fact, I recommend that you have this at home, um, just on hand because of how widely it's used. Now, ashwagandha root, that's the next one. And again, one of the things is when your immune system, when you're highly stressed, especially with everything that's going on and you're constantly being bombarded by all these news and everything like that, it is easy to experience a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress. And stress, as we know, compromises the immune system, right? Ashwagandha root is an adaptogenic herb and it is excellent for excellent, excellent for balancing any stress in the body. Um, also it's anti-inflammatory and it and is antiviral as well. So if you're looking like a daily maintenance, um, and it, it works slowly over time. So it's actually um, a preventative measure. So this is something that on a daily basis you can incorporate in your, in your routine, right? So you can mix it in teas, if you like to um, have coffee, you know, I don't necessarily recommend coffee, but if you'd like to, you can mix it in your teas and so on in your shakes. Um, it has sort of a bitterish taste, but not, if you can tolerate Cersei, it's nowhere near that. It's really, really mild, the bitter. <laughs> the next one, and I think we're coming to a close. Um, you can get ashwagandha root, uh, the powder. You can actually get the powder at any health food store or capsules um, and just incorporate it uh, into your regimen. And again, give it some time to work because this kind of a herb takes about a month or so for you to start noticing its effect. But you have to be consistent with it. Um, I've had, it's also separate and apart from it lowering, you know, that stress is adaptogenic. It's also good for like female hormones. Um, and it tends to be a little bit of an aphrodisiac. Just a little. <laughs> Put a little pep in your step. Now, neem, this is one of my favorite. And of course, there's 
of late there seems to be a name craze. Everybody's talking about neem. And you can understand why it's known as the village pharmacy. Um, you know, it has several de detoxifying effects on the body and it makes a great herb for supporting your healthy immune system, especially for cleansing any toxins from the, the body, antibacterial, antimalarial, antiviral. And again, this is a bitter tasting herb. It's a cooling herb. So any fevers or anything in relation to that, neem is excellent for that. I would suggest that everybody have a neem tree in their yard. And if you don't have one, then get the herbs. These are things that you should have on hand, you know, as it relates to your immune immunity or, or your immune system. Consistently look on how you're going to lower stress because again, stress affects your or impacts your immune system greatly. Um, and that leads to a cascading list of other things right? Because with stress comes inflammation and all of that, and it weakens the organs. So you want to pay attention to that. One of the practices, um, and uh, Paula would mention this, that Ayurveda um, touches into, and, and also traditional Chinese medicine. Um, Ayurveda, for example, focuses on the, the breath, yoga, and so on. Um, traditional Chinese medicine focus on like Tai Chi, all of these medicines, these branches of medicine, you can learn something from them is that they believe in a holistic approach to wellness. Um, you know, so it's not acting like in a vac vacuum. Um, you know, when we're sick, we don't just go for these herbs. You have to incorporate them as a part of your daily life, your daily practice, right? So I hope you have learned something here from this presentation as it relates to Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine. Again, if you're interested in getting the um, preparations for those, you can head to Instagram at, at Indie Organics um, and uh, we will send you how these are prepared or you can get a copy of this presentation. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tashania. And I guess everyone can understand why she was a, one of our presenters. A lot of information. Um, you should visit if you are not already following Indie Organics online on Instagram. She, they, she has a page and it's a great page. A lot of information all the time. She breaks things down. You can go there on any given day and get so much vital information. So thank you so much to Shania. Uh, we were answering questions as we were going along. So if there are any other right. questions, um, please, you can go ahead and uh, ask those questions now. Thank you, Paula. If not. Thank you, Ingrid. Yes. <laughs> uh, you can send us an um, email. Uh, it's at yeah, apothecary at gmail. Just send us an email, um, and we'll definitely just shoot that to you. Okay. Um, okay. Can you hear me? Can, can, you hear me? can you type the email in the chat, please? Okay. Okay. No problem. Let me do that right now. So we are going. We are, I also have to apologize because we actually hit our limit about half an hour ago well yeah and so a lot of people are not able to get on so what we're trying to do is upgrade so we can have you know as as much as 300 people join okay now we have one another problem because one of our presenters empress sandy was also trying to get on and she could not get on because we're at our limit so what i'm going to do our limit is 100. We didn't expect it to be more than 100 persons. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if I can drop off one more time so that she can get on. But the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to allow uh, Kushite's Vegetable Cuisine to do the presentation now. Now, last night we had a little, um, you know, panel discussion among ourselves and we were laughing because everyone came to the conclusion that people's perception of wellness is that you can eat garbage all the time and then you drink some bush tea and cure it. And what we are trying to promote instead 
is a scenario where you make wellness and an approach to healthy eating a, a way of life. So you eat well all the time. Now our next presenter educated me to, to some facts. Um, I also see that Empress Sandy just joined. So I'm gonna give her a little chance to settle in and then we will go to her. So Empress Sandy, whenever you are ready to go, you just let me know. But one of the things we were talking about yesterday um, was that Jamaica has over 80% of the world's healing herbs right here on this rock. There is absolutely no reason for us to be sick here in Jamaica. And if we would just go back, go back to our grandmother's wisdom. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Thank you so much. You would be good. So Empress Sandy is here. She's going to join and she's going to be giving you some information on grandmother's wisdom. Okay, there she is. All right, greetings everyone. Welcome, I Empress Sandy. Well Thank you so much, Paula, and a very pleasant afternoon to everyone that's on the call and that's in the chat. Had a little bit of technical difficulty getting on. I just want to say, I don't think there's any retrograde out there on the planet, but you know, sometimes the glitches is for a reason. Um, thank you so much for waiting patiently. My name is Empress Tandy Wise, and I'm a certified colon hydrotherapist, certified with the International Association of Colon Hydrotherapists. I've had a chance to study and work with Queen of Four for over 20 years. Um, Dr. Leela Africa, Dr. Sebi, some of our wisdom keepers, and a few that are no ancestors. So we want to say a shade to them and the work and the pioneer that they have done um, for so many years to have left a blueprint for us to follow. And it's interesting that we are here today all gathering. And I wanted to really remind everyone about the ancestral wisdom of, of colonic and colonic lavage. I've been doing detox and colon therapy now for about 20 years. And with everything that's going on, the gut health, is so important for you to keep the body in a homeostasis level. When we think about detox, there are seven channels in the body that constantly need to be detoxed. You're talking about the skin, the liver, the colon, um, the lymphatic system. And we have herbs, bush medicine out here from our simic contract to our peppermint, to our turmeric, to our ginger that are always readily available to us to use to keep the body at a homeostasis level. And it's very, very important that we are incorporating that in our daily regimen. When you wake up in the morning, boil a pot of bush tea and try to get the body to absorb these herbs so we can help the body stay in an alkaline state. When you think about detox and the colon, what is the colon's job supposed to do, right? Our colon is here to man manufacture electrolytes and B vitamins. Sometimes you just feel extremely full. If you're having three meals a day, just to give you an example, you should be having three bowel movements a day. When you look at babies that are nursing or newborns, the minute the baby eats something, you have to change their diaper because that's what you call a good, healthy, functioning colon. But because of maybe processed foods, um, constant distraction, our bowel movements are being delayed. So after a while, you find that the colon becomes sluggish and it starts to become dependent on whether it's laxative and the amount of water that we should be drinking daily, we're just not having that amount of water that we should be having whether it's because of our lifestyles, because of our busy lifestyles that we're doing, and we're not having enough fiber in our diet. So it's, it's, it's great that we're having platforms like this, where we're having a host of, I don't necessarily like to call experts, but people that are living this lifestyle and are here to champion, champion you along to let you know that boy, what it is that 
we're talking about is not something new. We're available to you at any point in time. Any questions that you have, you can reach out to Wellness Experience Jamaica and we, we're more than happy to support you on this. Um, I am based in the South Coast and close to Treasure Beach at Pedro Cross. And I have a center called Wise Wellness Center. One of the main thing that we focus on on the center is detoxes. When you think about whether it's trying to get on track or trying to have a lifestyle change, in order to do so, you have to detox. When we talk about detoxing, we're talking about your liver cleanse. Liver is the accessory organ of the digestive system. Whether you have been used to taking pharmaceutical medications or being exposed to household toxins, environmental toxins, it's important that we do a liver cleanse to make sure that the liver is filtering the blood and to get it into the cells properly that the liver is functioning at what we call a homeostasis liver. So liver. So we do liver cleanse with a foot detox, with a vaginal steaming, and we also offer a colonic lavage. With the colonic lavage, we're working with nine gallons of water. And the water comes in, it's an open system that we have. Water comes in, you feel full, and then you go ahead and, and evacuate. It's not invasive. And again, before you get into any kind of therapy similar to this, you have to make sure that you're a, a candidate for, for a colon therapy. Not everybody can do it. And that's why we always say seek advice or people that are um, knowledgeable in the field that can guide you along the way to help you to say, boy, you know, if you've had a part of your colon removed, maybe this is not for you. If you have IBS, maybe this is not for you. Maybe there's some herbs that you can take that can help you up to be able to qualify for you actually do a, a colonic. Um, Simicontract, I don't know if anybody remembers Simicontract. It's one of those sweet smelling herbs. It's grown a lot in St. Mary and uh, Trelawney and also in St. Thomas and Portland. Simicontract is great for parasites. It's great for worms. And it's usually sweetened with milk. Because what you find, um, these parasitic that live in the colon, they need something sweet to latch on to. And when they have that sweet herb or the simicontract, um, we're not killing anything, but we're just looking at what we would call terrain modification. So simicontract is, is something that you can find here in Jamaica. And one of the things that I really wanted to talk about, about the blood pH, Cersei, the bitters, what sweet, bitter to the palate, it's sweet to the liver and the gallbladder. So when you have your bitters, your dandelion roots, your dandelion, your mustard greens, um, your Cersei, it's a good way for you to get a liver to be able to, and, and the gallbladder, to increase its bile production. I just saw a question coming in the chat. We're going to get to the questions in a few minutes. I know Paula is on standby to be able to get to the questions that are in the chat. So we'll be able to answer your questions. I saw a question about neem. Neem is, is, is an interesting herb. Um, but again, you have to use, make sure that the neem is dry and just a small amount of it. Neem is really for gum disease. Okay. It's also for serious BOs, like serious body odors. And stuff like that. for the liver and the gallbladder, you have to use a small amount of neem. So in order for it to be effective. Uh, right. So reach out to us and let us know if you have any questions. Um, Paula, again, yes. thank you for the work that you're doing and bringing forth the ancestral wisdom and just having a platform where we can talk about with Bush tea and having a right. platform where we can talk about fortifi fortification on a holistic level, naturally. So right. again, we're not treating or diagnosing anything. Any advice that you need, reach out to us because every individual has a, a completely different blueprint. What work for me, I might drink guinea hen and it might give me a headache. You might drink guinea hen and it don't affect you in any shape or form. So reach out to one of us and um, get some guidelines and also right. um, just to make sure that you're on the right, you're on the right track. 
Thank right. you again, Paula. Right. I wanted to ask, there's two questions, but I wanted to um, talk about something that we touched on yesterday. And that was with what the prevailing situation is locally, that there is a correlation between the parasite load that we have and how sick you can get if you pick up certain viruses. And everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, can you right. just give us a little, just run through to explain why it is when you have you have a lot of parasites in your system, you can get sick and how it makes your immune system go down. I don't know if you can just describe that because sometimes people oh, can't they, make the connection between yeah. gut health and the immune system, you know. I mean, the gut is the brain of the body. The mental brain here is actually the functioning brain for the external environment, for you to be able to see, function a car, think. But when you think about nourishing the cells, when you think about longevity and when you think about health, it's coming from the gut. You know what I mean? From, from the solar plex, from the small intestine, the large intestine, that's really where it's coming from. So gut health is very, very, very important in this time now more than ever. Keeping the body in a homeostasis level is, is very, very vital. You cannot pull up to the gas station and drive a diesel vehicle and expect to put gas inside a diesel vehicle. We have to be nourishing the body in a certain way in order for it to maintain what we call optimal health. Mm -hmm. So keeping the body as alkaline as possible and keeping it in a homeostasis level is important. And it's not just what you're taking in, it's being the mental as well. It's also exercise and also having adequate amount of good clean water you should be drinking half your body weight in 10 ounces if you're 150 pounds you should be having 75 ounces of water so gut health plays a very vital part right now in terms of what we're eating and what we're putting inside of our body because ultimately what we're putting inside of our body has to be able to has to be able to nourish us. And that's the only reason why we eat in it. The only reason why we eat is to be able to make sure that the cells are nourished in order for us to stay healthy in terms of this carbon-based beans that we are, what we need, our omegas, our aminos, our vitamins and our minerals, and so forth. So again, I'm gonna mention that if you are 140 pounds, should be having half your body weight in water, which is 70 ounces. And that's really um, the proper amount. A lot of the research that's out there, and I'm gonna bring this up, Paula, it's based on European standards. We have nothing to match the melanin by a palmer. Our bone density is a lot different from, a, from, from other races. So I'm gonna touch on, on what we need to do as Africans and melanated beings to maintain our health at a certain level. So um, I wanted to really bring that up because it's also very important. The Chinese, they might have for them Chinese thing. You know, the Indians, they might have for them Indian thing. What are the Africans doing in terms of our DNA setup, our melanin biopower? What are we doing for that? And believe it or not, you know, enough plant beans, good water, vitamin D, the sunshine, Keeping the mind, body, spirit in a level where it's at a homeostasis level. So Paula, again, thank you for this platform and thank you for bringing us together so we can discuss and share um, what you call the granny, granny advice, the ancestral wisdom. I'm going to look quickly in the chat just to see if there's any more questions. And... Um, I see that there's quite a few questions in the chat. Someone asked, what's the best time of the day to have your herbal teas? Again, it depends. You have some teas that will make you a little bit more relaxing. You have some teas that are stimulating. Um, you, 
you want to make sure that if you're going to have stuff like chamomile, you don't have it in the morning because it's going to make you sleepy and relax. Um, your sleepy time, again, those are your evening sleeps. Things that you need to work through the body and through the organs is what we call our stimulated sleep. So if you ever have your sarsaparilla, your guinea hen, your vervain, those are what we call our morning teas. So the body can absorb it, absorb it better. We want to work in harmony with the sun. You know, when you see it's when the sun rise and stuff is vibrant and up and green, that's the energy we need to maintain our melanin via palma and our carbon-based beings, which we are, right? Um, so you want to make sure that those you're matching the herbs with it. It's interesting when I was going through this and I was thinking again, I said, boy, that is amazing because we have seven channels that <laughs> detox in. And I said, boy, you know, even, at, even though the earth was created in seven days. So, you know, there's no mistake how divinely made we are from creation. And we give thanks for that. Paula, thank you right. so much for this platform. I look forward to working with you and yes. um, bringing forth the ancestral wisdom and reminding us, you know, oh, we are doing the thing. You don't know one love. Absolutely. Thank you thank so you. much, Empress. Ladies and gentlemen, Empress Sandy could go on and on and on, but she has an appointment and she has to run. We have some questions that um, we've seen in the chat and we are going to be sharing the answers to those questions on Wellness Experience Jamaica in the coming days, okay? So fret not, um, we have to just move on to our next presentation which is going to be equally engaging. Um, and I suspect that some of the questions that you have put here will, will be able to answer. Um, the next presenter will be able to answer. Okay, so at this time, I will, without further ado, I am going to call upon Ms. Makeda McDonald, Kushite Vegetable Cuisine to give her presentation on wellness, <laughs> food, alkaline hi, food. Uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I hope everyone is hearing me clearly. I know yes, Earth, I saw some commentary about the volume or the projection not being clear enough. So I will try to be as clear as possible. So I am very pleased that Empress Tandy included a particular note in her presentation regarding the nature of the herb and food gene relation. This is a presentation that's primarily re related to Africans in Jamaica because we are 96% of the population and quite frankly, if you look at it, we are at the greatest danger and at the greatest risk of a lot of the poor lifestyle diseases, the poor eating habits, etc. And we really have to think about why is this? Part of the reason is our history of how we came to be, how we came to be located in Jamaica. And yes, we do have ethnic minorities such as the Chinese and such as the Indian that do have valuable practices when it comes to health and wellness. However, what of the Africans? What have we lost? What is it that we have of value to present or to gain from? Much of our ancestral wisdom, much of our cultural heritage has been either lost, has been destroyed, or has been ridiculed. And so it's very, very important, even more so for us, to reconnect and reestablish the basis for indigenous, ancestral, herbal, natural healing. And I want to make it clear, a big part of our platform at Kushite's Vegetable Cuisine is about self-empowerment. It's not about being a celebrity herbalist, it's not about being a celebrity chef. It's how we can utilize the very things that are around us, the very things that we take for granted, the very things that we look over 
to empower ourselves. No one is coming to save you. Everything you need is within you. Now, as Paula mentioned earlier, Jamaica has a good 80% of the world's healing herbs and food. And we're not talking about just um, healing herbs which are regular or things that you can overlook. We're talking about the most potent things. We're talking about things that have been docu well documented and are widely available and that grows wild. Let's talk about one of our favorites. Now this is bitter wood. This is the inside of the tree and this is how the outer skin looks or the outer layer of the tree looks. Now bitter wood is also known as quassia. Quassia, it is said it, the, the wood is named after an enslaved African from Suriname who discovered it and, and used it during slavery to not only heal the persons who were enslaving him, but also other Africans. And in modern day treatments, it has been used as a cure for malaria to treat malaria. And it is very, very, very effective as a parasite cleanse and a dewormer. So if you're concerned about taking horse dewormer, you need not be because nature has gifted us with something called bitter wood, which you can simply boil and drink, or you can steep it in your water and drink it. It's excellent, it's an antiviral um, herb. It's excellent for the skin, it's excellent for the blood, the blood strength strengthener. It also has iron, it's rich in many things that we need to cut down our parasite load, as well as antiviral activity. And this is widely available in Jamaica. We can also talk about the sarsaparilla root, which you know is a big part of African Jamaican culture. It's a big part of our tradition. You hear the Rastaman talk about it. You hear songs being made of it. Sarsaparilla, it's a big part in root drink. So you see, a lot of, it, a lot of what we need is already known to us. It's already available to us, but we overlook it because we are taught to doubt ourselves. We are told constantly that these things are backward. You know, when the Rasta man came and spoke about the need for including natural herbs, I'm sweating so much, guys, please forgive me. <laughs> um, the need for natural herbs and natural food, these lifestyles were ridiculed. And we see now that the need for them is even increasingly necessary at this very moment. So we talk about salsa pearl and we, we, know, we know about Irish moss. We know about sea moss. We know how Dr. Sabi literally made sea moss a catchword and a household name when before no one really took it as seriously as they are taking it now. So one of the things that we have to do is ensure that we lay claim to the, the healing modalities that are very much within our reach, that are very much within the backyards and the markets and within the, the regular local people. We don't need to go outside of ourselves. We don't need to go outside of who we are. You know, Dr. Sebi is famous for saying that in China, God placed the food for the Chinese in China, God placed the food for the Indian in India. What about the Africans? What about the Africans? Are we the only race of people who did, do, do not have a long thousand year tradition of healing? No, that can't be true. We simply need to tap into it. And if you look at our ancient traditions in this country, you will see much of what our ancestors brought. Now I'm gonna to touch on a few of them. One of the, the most important ones is something called tuna plant. Now, non-Jamaicans may know of it as nopal. It's like, a, it's a cactus really, and it grows a, it grows a fruit called prickly pear. Now in, in, in Jamaican, African Jamaican healing, 
one of the things that we use it for is to relieve pain. So you can put slices of it in your water or coconut water, let it steep for a bit and drink it. It's excellent for pain, excellent for menstruation. And the nopal is extremely versatile and can be even used in stir fries. It can be used as part of your green juice. It's a very versatile, excellent plant. And speaking of stir fries, one of the things that we encourage at Kushites is, and I think Paula, you touched on it earlier, don't see healing herbs as, as the way the West sees medication. Let thy food be my medicine. What does that mean? No, no, KDOT, it's not dragon fruit. Completely different thing. Completely different thing. I'm sorry I don't have a sample here for it, but no, dragon fruit is not the same as prickly pear. Um, well, where, where was I? Yes, so don't, herbs and alkaline food is really not to be treated like medication in the Western sense. What do I mean by that? So as Paula alluded earlier, you, you eat, eat, eat all these food-like substances. And then when you get sick, you boil a cup of tea or you go on a herbal regimen. No, that's not how we want it to be. We want it to be the way, like the way of our ancestors. When your grandmother cook a thing called pepper pot soup, which is rich with callaloo. It is rich with, um, what, what you call that, um, leaf. Paula, remind me the leaf we were talking about last night, elderflower. Uh, it is rich with nettle. Yes, Paula is showing the, the tuna. This is the common tuna yes. that we usually use to wash our hair. Um, no, I just want to tell everyone that everything you're hearing Keisha talking about is relevant to today and what is going on. We're talking in code, but you know what we're talking about. We're literally giving you all the remedies. Okay, <laughs> so listen to this presentation very, very carefully. And this is too now, we usually use it to wash our hair. It is not for washing your hair. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the real deal. You may continue, Keisha. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Paula. Yes, yeah, so pepper pot soup, and we're talking ital pepper pot soup. We're not talking pepper pot soup with animals now because we don't want any acid in the blood. We're trying to keep things alkaline. But if you go back to things like pepper pot soup that have your pepper elder, your callaloo, popularly called, now called amaranth in, in health food stores, you can go and get amaranth seeds. Well, let me tell you, it's the same thing as callaloo. Amaranth is just callaloo. And what we want is for healing foods to be part of our daily digestion. So you see when Empress Tandy talk about gut health, the more you eat alkaline food, the less you have to rely on constantly detoxing. Common sense, right? So the, the, the cleaner you keep your home, the cleaner you keep your surroundings, the less you have to deep clean. The less you have to deep clean and the more pleasant it is. So what we encourage is that don't rely on herbs and alkaline food as medication. Let it be a part of your daily consumption, your daily life. Juice some tuna, add it to your stir fry. Uh, you know, add it to your okra, stew up some okra and tuna. These things are vital, nutritious things. we we'll talk about a thing called nettle. Nettle is excellent for pregnant mothers, lactating mothers, it is a nutritive herb, very good for the skin, very good at boosting immunity, very good at re removing toxins from the body. And going back to even sarsaparilla and, and quassia or bitterwood, Dr. Sebi taught us that if you are deficient in iron, you're, 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 you're guaranteed to be sick that iron is one of the most potent and the most important minerals that the body needs. And iron acts as a magnet. Once you're, you, you nourish your body with iron-rich foods, you will attract other 
nutrients and minerals to you. All the zinc, all the copper, etc. These things is, are very, very important. So if you have, if you live in Jamaica, where we have the most potent sarsaparilla in the world, where we have herbs like quassia, where we have nettle growing wild, where we have parsley and growing wild, people go to their backyards and dig up weeds and call them weeds and call them pests when this is your food. The pest that you're eating is actually on your plate. Those things with four legs and eyes, those are pests. Purslane is actually food. Dandelion is, is food. They're not to be discarded. We have to begin to change our thinking or we're going to be perpetually at the will and mercy of those who decide what medication is. And we need to do it now before they, you know, there is a, there is a trend. There, no, it's not the same as cow itch. No, it's a different thing. There is a trend with um, that we see with, with African peoples all over the world where we start to do something or something is part of our culture and we take little note of it or we do not give it the attention it should get and it is taken from us, rebranded and resold to us at a higher price. We see that happening with CMOS and we see that happening with the vegan movement, what was done to the Rastafari movement. The Rastafari the super food. <laughs> the super food. foods, right? Super so, foods. So no, they, they have. call them super foods, but we, we grew up on them. And yes. now our cacao is now, no, our cocoa is now cacao and it's a super food. Yes. And our cassava is a super food. Our breadfruit is a super food. Everything. So yeah. So we need to recognize it from now, right? Absolutely. Before, before it's taken from us, and resold and rebranded to us. We have to stake ownership and stake claim to it. Um, aloe vera, we, we, aloe vera is an acidic plant. And as Empress Tandy mentioned before, we really want to keep the body an alkaline state. So moving on to some of the other common things that are available, readily available in Jamaica. Chocho, or they call it chayote. It's a form of squash in Mexico, native to Mexico. It's widely available in Jamaica as well. We, are, we, we grew up having it in soups, but chocho is so underlooked and is so potent in, nour in nutrients. It's so potent and it, it is versatile. You can use it to make so many things. And because the flavor palette is what some people would call bland, it's actually excellent for cooking because you can use it to adapt to any flavor of your pot. So if you have a little jerk spice, um, if you have a sweet and sour spice that you're working with, the chocho or the chayote squash will absorb these beautifully. And it's, it's, it, it's, a, it's, I have some notes here. It's actually rich in zinc, rich in magnesium. It's, um, it actually contains 12% of the daily recommended copper. And we know what cup, we need copper for our melanated bodies. It has 10% of the daily recommended dose for zinc. Something as simple as chocho, you can add it to your green juice. Ditch the foreign green apples and add chocho. You can use it to make apple pie. There are a number of ways. Once we, again, reminding you, once we start to understand what food is and that food is your medicine, don't wait to be sick. Don't wait to do a detox. Let healthy eating be a regular routine part of your life. So your dinner should be a detox meal. Your dinner should be chocha. Your dinner should be rich in magnesium. Things like Kalalu. Kalalu, when the, when the, when the Spanish um, conquistadors came to the island of Jamaica and the Jamaicans, the original Jamaicans were inhabiting, they, they, they were very much into cons consuming kalalu and kalalu seeds because of the energy and the vitality that it gave. It was like no other. They, they actually outlawed. They actually outlawed kalalu. Do you, do, can you imagine? Something that is so easy to grow, so easily accessible in Jamaica that we overlook, that we can easily consume, 
We don't have to wait till we're sick. Something like a natter, a natter. Now, you know, I know this, this is gonna be controversial what I'm about to say, but I'll be remiss if I didn't say it because that's part of our platform. A lot of people are talking about turmeric and we know that there's a history with using turmeric in curries and all of that. But really the, the alkaline spice that we should be using and that we were using ancestrally is an herb called anatto. Some people call it, uh, what do they call it? The poor man's um, saffron. It's, uh, it, it, it's, it's funny, it's kind of funny to describe, but it's very rich. It has a very rich reddish orange pigment and it is extremely potent with antioxidants, nutrients, and that is what our elders use. We never used to use curry. We never used to use curry. You know, curry and turmeric has a very controversial, um, controversial data when it comes to kidney disease. And, and, and you know, Dr. Sami spoke about this. So I know a lot of people, a lot of people are very much hooked and addicted to the nature of turmeric. But I couldn't leave here without letting you know that anatta, anatta is the herb that you need to be using. Anatta is indigenous to a lot of our healing modalities way before turmeric. And most people are not using it. And, it, and if you ask your grandmother, they don't know about curry. They call it natta. So um, it is food coloring. It can, it can be used as food coloring, but like I said, there's no reason why your everyday regular food items or regular food items should not be also your medicine. That's the approach we want to have. So um, yes, you can cook it just like curry. So I don't know what Ruku is. I'm sorry, Paula, I'm trying to answer at the same time, but essentially ladies and gentlemen, I really want to just impart that Everything we need in Jamaica is around us. We don't need horse dewormer because we have, we have quassia. We don't need any medication because we have a plethora of herbs and foliage at our disposal. We have something, we have blue vervain, we have kalawala, these things grow wild. There's absolutely no reason why you should live in Jamaica or have access to Jamaican foods and be sick. Or if you're sick, you shouldn't be sick for too long. So I implore everyone to get re-familiarized with these healing foods and healing herbs and really start to embark upon habits that will keep us alkaline, keep us disease-free, and keep us away from harmful substances and harmful pharmaceuticals. Thank you so much, Paula. So, you know, I was just going to send you a note and said, no, you don't have to hurry. You can go and talk for the rest of the evening because <laughs> we could listen to you forever. I could, and I think everyone here also could, but we cannot stay very much longer. But so, you know, thank you so much, Keisha. One thing that I'd wanted to ask, there's a question um, uh, regarding, oh, you spoke yesterday about trumpet the trumpet tree and I was like the trumpet tree isn't the trumpet tree like the tree that grew up when you chop down the forest uh, um I didn't even know it had a value all the value I know it did was block my view so you want to just tell us how they used it uh, originally back in the old days well well here's the thing you know people talk about poverty and not having access to Amer the Americanized way of life. Well, the beauty of it is that many of the rural Jamaicans, because of that very fact, a lot of their diets were actually healthier and better. So one of the things um, my grandparents told me and my mother and my father told me, which was very, very common, was using trumpet leaf to make a kind of, way to call it now, a kind of latte almost. It's very flavorful, it has, it has a unique flavor profile and they use it with coconut milk and they used to give the children. Bissy 
Has anyone had busy, busy with coconut milk, um, vanilla and all those and cinnamon leaf and those things? Absolutely delicious. So these are some of the things, again, I'm so sorry I forgot about busy because I grew up, my grandmother giving me busy as a treat. It wasn't even medication. We used to fight over busy tea. And it's very, trumpet leaf is very similar in terms of how you can, how you can make it as a lovely warm drink. And it grows wild. It grows wild and it grows in abundance. You can always, you can also use trumpet leaf as one of your um, greens for pepper pot soup or callaloo soup. You can add it to beef up your callaloo soup. It's absolutely delicious and extremely nice. You can add nettle to that mix too. Nettle. A lot of people in the chat were asking if nettle was the same thing as cow itch. And I remember I was asking you that last night. Yes. No, is, it's is a there... different thing. It's a little bit broader. The leaves are broader. I'm sorry I don't have any with me, but it's not the same as cow itch. No. Okay. So what I would recommend for everyone here, if there is a herb that... Keisha mentioned, you cannot normally just go in on Google and type in image seracy or image um, net, stinging nettle or image whatever the herb is and you will get some images that will show you how it looks and you can find it in real life, right? No, I just want to thank you Keisha for such a powerful presentation. As I said, I know I could sit here for another two hours and chat with you, but uh, unfortunately, the platform will not allow us to stay much longer. What I will say is this. This is just the beginning. We are planning to do this every Sunday going forward because we want more and more people to know what the remedies are sitting outside in your garden sitting outside in the bush in the back. I, I was telling someone that I was so ashamed. I went to Empress Sandy's house in Treasure Beach and she was outside picking purslane. Meanwhile, I have purslane at my house that grow up every time the rain falls and I, I get annoyed and pull it out and throw it away. I did not know. So I want to probably, next week we're going to have Dr. White, Tayoma, and Neil Robinson, who is also another, uh, uh, someone who is an expert on herb, herbs and Dr. CD. And in the following weeks, we are going to have other herbalists who will come and speak about how they have been using herbs, how they have been combining it, um, how helpful and useful it has been for them. So different herbalists to present different perspectives. We are not saying that what we have put forward is right or wrong. What we are trying to do is provide a platform for local herbalists, local naturopathic practitioners, um, and other natural modalities to be shared with the Jamaican public and, of course, the diaspora. We just want to make it more mainstream. We want to make it more accessible to everyone so that all of us can be empowered around our health and not outsource our health and our wellness to external entities or institutions or even the government because it is clear that the system is not in a position to support large numbers. So what we try to do is to ensure that we keep well, right? So we want to try to discourage persons from eating processed foods, processed sugars, uh, baked goods, and try to go back to basics. Um, try to, you know, consume um, more whole foods. Another thing that we are going to be doing, we are going to try to compile a document that we will share on all platforms of the presenters here, plus on the Wellness Experience Jamaica platform, so that you can have a little PDF, maybe four pages long, of this, of some of the herbs that were mentioned in this presentation. In addition, we are going to be making this presentation available on YouTube in another couple of days. 
and we will announce that on our wellness experience page. So continue sending the questions. We are picking up all your questions and we are going to be answering them on the wellness experience page. Um, everyone has the telephone number that was on the flyer. That's my number and you can text me and I can send information to you, okay? Um, we are collecting the questions. Keep on sending the questions. We are going to be doing this next week again and the following week and the following week. And we're going to be featuring or showcasing our local practitioners, okay? So thank you so much again for attending, showing so much interest and showing up to empower yourselves around wellness. We need to change the narrative from illness to wellness because wellness is where it's at, right? So keep on following all of the pages of all of the presenters. So please follow Wellness Experience Jamaica if you're not. Please follow Kushite Vegetable Cuisine. If you're not, please follow Wise Wellness Center. That is Empress Sandy, if you are not. And please follow Indie Organics on Instagram, if you are not. We are going to be continuing this. This is just the beginning. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you. Be well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you, Paula. Welcome. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Paula. Thank you. Paula, you rock. Thank you. Way to go. Thank you.